please sit down. And now I call on my denominational team member, Mr. Rama Murthy, to say a few words.
Well, can I welcome and congratulate the new councillors who have been uh, recently elected. Welcome back to those who regained their seats and commiseration to those who lost their seats. Now, there are no fire alarms scheduled for this evening. Therefore, if the fire alarm sounds, please evacuate the building immediately. The fire exit is located at the rear of this room. Go down the back stairs and meet in the War Memorial Park. Now, can I call on uh, for nomination for the election of mayor for 2014-2015? Councillor Harvey. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Everyone, it gives me great pleasure to nominate Roger Gardner as our mayor for the next municipal year. Now, I've known Roger since I was first elected on this council back in 2002. And Roger goes back a lot further than that. <laughs> As we know, the baton of morality is passed to the member with the longest service. And Roger, for his sins, has been a councillor since 1992. Now, that's some 22 years. So I guess, Roger, does this count as your prize for good behaviour? I hope so, Roger, because you deserve it. I'm not necessarily sure you deserve us a lot to try and control in this chamber. That's a different matter. But... I hope you're going to have, and you will have, and you will be a great mayor this year for us. Now, I and Roger have something in common, something that has come to define our politics differently, yes, but nonetheless an important part of our lives that has shaped us both. I remember the old Blackadder joke, where Blackadder is exposing a German spy to Stephen Fry's character, General Melchert. And Blackadder reports to Melchert, I asked if she'd been to one of the great universities, Oxford, Cambridge or Hull. She replies, well, and Blackadder then says, you fail to spot that any two of those are the great universities. Oxford's a complete dump. <laughs> Both Roger and I share the fact that we attended the great university that is Hull. Our old slogan in Hull used to be, it's never dull in Hull. Well, at the end of the M62, when you've got nowhere else to go, the place has a way of ingraining itself on you. And once you've been, I can definitely say you're never quite the same. The likes of Chris Mullins, John Prescott, Philip Larkin, Anthony Minghella, and Roy Hattersley have all attended Hull. And I can tell that Roger is very proud of his time there and thoroughly enjoyed his student years. He tells me he feels he learnt more talking in coffee shops around the university than he did in the lecture theatres. You know, nothing changes about coffee shops, does it, Roger? While at university, Roger joined the Young Conservatives. Yes, even in the late 60s, there were Young Conservatives, even in the Socialist Republic of Yorkshire. You know, we used to keep a few of the students' union for special occasions. We used to roll them out to say that there was something else other than a socialist, you know. It was something called a Tory. And they come from somewhere called Down South. Roger even joined the picket line, protesting with the pesky socialists. He told me that he, and one protest in particular, the protest in particular he was involved with, was a jovial affair, really, except for the threats from the students, uh, from the hierarchy of the university to report the students to their LEAs. That doesn't change. It was in my time as well, Roger. <laughs> but you did tell me that the porters kept everybody in good spirits by chalking up the cricket scores. Now, that's what I call direct action. What do we want? A hundred not out. When do we want it? Before tea. Now, Roger left university with a degree in economics and went to work at Coopers and Librand doing his articles. I always find that a funny phrase, and doing the articles. Well, Roger was very good at his articles. He was lucky and wasn't desk-bound and was able to spend a lot of time moving around commuting to and from London, and he built up his prof professional reputation. In the mid-70s, he had the chance to move abroad to Malta. He absolutely loved the life out there. And who could blame him? The sand, the sea, the sun, the Mediterranean, food and wine. And also his tax avoidance scheme in the company car and the, and the flat. 
Now the job, the job was something else. The job was whether or not he could bring the island in 1975 up to the 1948 Act of Standards of Accounting. Now I am absolutely sure that his Conservative colleagues in this chamber would appreciate his assistance in bringing their budget up to the 1948 Act as well. When it came time for Roger to renew his work permit and then apply for an extension, he encountered a, a few timing errors. But luckily, the day before he was due to be shipped off to Italy, the permit came through. So he is used to last minute hiccups. I hope the year goes smoothly, Roger. I'm sure it will. And it will be an eventful year for all the right reasons. Now, you told me that you thoroughly enjoyed your career. And I think from the conversation we had, I got a real sense of the commitment to the people you've worked with and the people and the companies you've worked for. You've been successful. And I think from the conversation we had, you've told me you've made such a difference, and it shows. And I think that sense of personal achievement is something that's very important to you. You told me that in the late 70s, you applied to work for a client that had just been taken over by the Germans. And you told me that they were well versed in Euro-American relations, but they still needed a Brit to sort out the money. 22 years later, the business was still going strong when they asked him to anglicize their slogan. One thing we do, and we do it right. Now, in typical Roger style, he cut to the quick, cut to the point and said, totally committed to printers. Now, it stuck, and it won you a bottle of champagne. Now, Roger's represented the northeast of our borough for over 20 years. On occasion, he's had to compete for his seat, not least with his own side. And Roger lost out in the boundary changes in 2008, where he came third in the Tory selection to Marilyn and Keith, which, in effect, knocked him out. But did, it, I did, did that knock him down? Of course not. Did he take it lying down? Of course not. He bounced back with great fun in contesting South Ham. Now, he got within 30, 30 votes of Sean. But yet again, yet again, your fame on visiting but not staying in socialist republics is held up. So Rogers had a couple of years off, but in 2012, he stood for Pamba and won the seat that now brings him here tonight to be our mayor for the next year. Now, I've worked most with Roger on the Audit Governance and Accounts Committee, and I think you can see his commitment to the role and to holding his own side to account as much as giving us a hard time. To be absolutely honest, I've never had an argument with Roger. We've always politely, politically disagreed. And I think that sense of honest disagreement is healthy because it shows that it's built on respect. And I know the officers and the members alike respect Roger. Rita Collins once said that Roger, you were too nice to be a Conservative. <laughs> now, Trisha and Roger were married in 98, and Roger's very proud of his stepchildren and grandchildren. Alex is an ex-student of the Hearst and of the School London School of Fashion, where she got a first in costume design. And Richard's a primary school teacher in Sheffield. So here we're continuing the socialist relationship here with socialist republics, Roger. Your family's going to be a huge support to you this year, and I hope they're looking forward to it as well, and they thoroughly enjoy the year with you. The year ahead, Roger, is going to be full of challenge, particularly in this place, I think. But it's also going to be full of opportunity and events that I know you'll enjoy. And I know you will represent us in the very best traditions of the mayor. And I know you have meticulously planned for it, which is important. Have a great year, Roger. Have a superb year. And I am very happy to nominate you to be our mayor next year. Good luck. Now, can I call on the second uh, councillor, Shaka? I'm over here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've moved, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> um, Mr. Mayor, it, it gives me. Sorry. Sorry? Sorry. I've got problems already. <laughs> <laughs> It gives me great pleasure, indeed, to um, second the nomination of Councillor Roger Gardner to be Mayor of this borough for 2014-15. I've shared the work of looking after a large proportion of the northern parts of the borough with Roger since 1992, when he, Councillor Chapman, and I were elected to the new three-member Caliva Ward. Long gone. As a result of more boundary changes, Bramley and Sherfield were taken away from us and Pamba became a one-member ward. But then, in 2008, the Pamba and Silchester ward was formed and Roger and I were elected to it and have remained its members ever since. 
We, of course, believe all wards in the northern boundaries of the borough are special, and indeed many mayors have come from this area. Here, of course, I have to include Tadley and Silchester, myself, but Mr Mayor Pamba is even more special in this respect, as there is one unadopted lane in Pamba known as the Glen, which will have been home to three mayors, the late Charles Pyatt, and of course Keith Chapman, who is with us here today, and he's been mayor twice, he's a bit greedy, and now <coughs> Councillor Roger Gardner. I'm sure this must be a record and a very special road it is indeed, but I have to say if you go visiting them, four-wheel drives are probably a very good idea because not just unadopted, it's unmade. I'm sure the other members here today will agree that sharing wards has the advantage of one getting to know one's fellow ward members really well. And I have to say, Pamber and Silchester produces not only very caring members, but ones with really good senses of humour, which are attributes much appreciated for the mayoralty, especially in the mayor's cham in the chamber. I think he'll need it, and he's got it. So, good luck with that, Roger. Roger and his wife Patricia share the same strong interest and connections with the theatre, which is wonderful. And Patricia is also a brilliant needlewoman. It hasn't been mentioned in her thing about needlewoman, but it's photography. But I can tell you she is absolutely superb. But I've also recently discovered she's a keen tap dancer. She'll probably hate me mentioning that. <laughs> Therefore, Mr. Mayor, in seconding Councillor Roger Gardner to be our new mayor, I'm recommending to you a very talented and hard-working team to be our new mayor and mayoress. Thank you. Mr Mayor, I am pleased to accept. Can I just... Uh, call on uh, all the councillors present. Are you in favour of Councillor Gardner becoming our mayor for 2014-15? Uh, Great. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please be upstanding for the worship of the mayor. <laughs>
Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. First task performed very well. C Mayor, could you now uh, read and sign the declaration of acceptance of office as Mayor? I, Roger Gardner, having been elected to the office of Mayor of Basing, Stoke and Dean Borough Council, declare that I take that office upon myself and will duly and faithfully fulfil the duties of it according to the best of my judgment and ability. I undertake to observe the code as to the conduct which is expected of members of the Basingstoke and Dean Borough Council, dated this 29th of May, 2014. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Now take your seat as mayor. Right, if I may now ask the, the past mayoress, uh, Julie Putty, to present the new mayoress, Trisha Gardner, with some flowers. <laughs> I will now call for nominations for the appointment of Deputy Mayor. Councillor? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I nominate Councillor Anne Court. Thank you. And second it. Councillor Franklin. Mayor, I'm very proud and pleased to second Councillor Anne Court as the Deputy Mayor for Basingstoke and Dean. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, I'm pleased to accept. Please talk amongst yourselves while we wait for <laughs> and we won't. <laughs>
I'll do this now. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Deputy Mayor, would you please now read and sign the Declaration of Acceptance of Office as Deputy Mayor? I, Anne Court, having been elected to the office of Deputy Mayor of Basingstoke and Dean Borough Council, declare that I take that office upon myself and will duly and faithfully fulfil the duties of it according to the best of my judgment and ability. I undertake to observe the code as to the conduct which is expected of members of the Basingstoke and Dean Borough Council, dated this 29th of May 2014. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right, I, I will now ask the, the Mayoress, Patricia Gardner, to present the new Deputy Mayoress, the Collect Court, with some flowers. And I will be proposing a vote of thanks to the outgoing Mayor and Mayoress. Councillor Dan Putty took on the role as Mayor as a well-respected member of this council and an experienced Justice of the Peace, popular throughout the community. One year later, well, Dan has used his year well. He has enhanced not only the reputation of the borough and the mayoralty, but also that of Councillor Dan Putty, we will be expecting even more from Dan in the years to come, and I'm sure we're not going to be disappointed. Dan has mentored me well. Anything I do right this year, he can claim the credit for. <laughs> Anything I do wrong is my fault for not listening. <laughs> Dan, I thank you. Members will also thank Dan for carrying out this council's business in an efficient and timely manner. Only one meeting was allowed to run beyond 9.30. Only the once did I have to suspend standing orders. For all those early nights, Dan, the members thank you. <laughs> For all the engagements you undertook with the Mayoress, with enthusiasm, real interest and concern. For all the time you devoted to the role of Mayor, the community thanks you. Dan, we thank you. And I shall have great pleasure in presenting you with a past mayor's badge. Well done, well done. Thank you very much. Good. And a past badge for the outgoing mayoress. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Members' collection, which we had at the end of the year, has all gone to the Mayor's Charity Appeal. And I will now hand over to Councillor Putty, who will uh, be giving the, the Mayor's awards. Thank you, Mr Mayor. <coughs> Councillors, past Mayors, our MP, our Member of Parliament, guests, staff, the press, and the audience tonight on the webcast watching us. 
this is my last opportunity to speak to you from this chamber as your mayor or just immediate past mayor. <laughs> <laughs> I am most grateful to my chief executive, my, the then deputy mayor, my mayoral coordinators, especially Debbie Collins, and the mayoress, my wife, who have guided me to serve the people humbly, sincerely, and with love. I am profoundly grateful to you for giving me the honor to serve, to work for you, and with you for the dramatic transformation of our borough in my mayoral year. You have risen to the challenges to make our social fabric stronger, our families healthier, our people more prosperous with our big business sector expanding to the global challenges. Our cultural, artistic, and leisure assets have a wonderful and bright future. <coughs> Our volunteering organizations are serving our communities with great generosity and full of enthusiasm. My theme of community cohesion is getting stronger every day, and our people are inspired to live together, build together, and play together. In the events I have attended as your mayor, every ribbons I have cut, every plaques I have unveiled, I have tried to give our borough a brighter future for our dreams in a cohesive society, in a safer society, and healthier environment to build for prosperity. I have thought to promote our borough by putting our people first. Our commercial sector have created lots of new jobs. Our health sector have invested heavily for our well-being. Our schools and colleges are striving for higher standards and successes for our children and our emergency and police services are making our borough safer to live. Now I turn to my awards. I am proud to give my awards to the unsung heroes of our borough who continue to serve our communities without any fanfare or noise, and to an industry which has made such a massive difference to lives not only in this country, but the world over. And I am grateful to be able really to have turned over my uh, <laughs> mayorship to Councillor Gardner. Our new mayor, Julie, my family, and I joined the people of Basingstoke and De uh, Dean Borough Council to wish Roger Gardner, Councillor Roger Gardner, the very best as our new mayor and the first citizen of our borough. 
from the bottom of my heart, I want to express the gratitude I feel to all of you. Thank you. And uh, now I turn to my awards. I am proud to give my awards now. First award goes to Mr. Kanak Rajgo. Mr. Kanak Rajgo came to England from Zanzibar, East Africa, when he was almost 16 years of age under the British scheme to study in Bournemouth. Kanak later moved to London to carry out his further studies in engineering. While growing up in London, he got married and he has two children. He came to Basingstoke over 40 years ago and worked at a local hardware company for a number of years. He is a very business-minded gentleman and started his own successful engineering supply company as well as several branches throughout the south and southwest of England. Kanak also ran four public houses in the Basingstoke area. At the age of 60, he decided to sell all his businesses and decided to live a more philanthropic lifestyle. He is a very active person. He could not sit idle and decided to help people. This gave him the opportunity to join the Basingstoke Hindu Society, where he took on the responsibility to turn Basingstoke Carnival Hall into a sustainable and efficient entity. He became the chairman of the Basingstoke Hindu Society about five years ago and he has dedicated the majority of his time to the running of the Carnival Hall. He is held in high regard by many groups of people who use the facilities at the hall. Among these are Basingstoke Stroke Association, Tea Dance, and a large contingent of Nepalese community. He has also maintained the patronage of the National Health Service Blood Donation Unit along with many other groups who use a whole on a regular basis. He had reinvested the funds when the holes were hired for the upkeep and numerous improvements made to the Carnival Hall. This means that the whole community has a place where they can meet in a friendly and modern environment. Kanak is also committed supporter of the Basingstoke Multicultural Forum, which is located at the Shoot House. I have great pleasure in uh, giving my award to him. Now I turn to my second award, and I would call the then mayoress, or my wife, to come and present this particular award. Michelle came to my notice when we were at, when we went to our very, very first 
uh, event in Overton Community Centre, a fete run by the co-op store for running, for raising money for local causes. She was organising, she was there organising everybody and all the stores. But I'd also met her as a parent of a child with special needs in my nursing career. She never moaned and was always pleased with whatever people did. She is married to Tony and has a daughter, Maria, and a son, Peter, with special needs, who now is 32 years old, and to who they manage at home with very little help. As well as this, she has been guiding for 28 years, and last week organised a, a, a special day of fun to celebrate the 100 years of guiding. Uh, but what made her special on that very first event that stuck me throughout my year was there was a group of elderly ladies attending the event. We were shown to sit down and ask to have a cup of tea. But she not only made tea for, brought us tea and cake, but she also brought the group of elderly ladies um, cake as well and tea and made sure that they were okay. Nothing was too much on that day. She always has a smile on her face, even though she has a busy life. She is also a trustee of the Tech Carers Together. So I would like to ask Michelle to come and receive an award for all the years that she has given to guiding and helping in the community of Overton. My, for my third award, the last individual award, this goes to Gordon Piper. Gordon moved to Basingstoke in 1989, and soon after he joined the steering committee of the community center for Hatchwaran, which was open later. In 1989, to 2003, he became member of the Basingstoke Hockey Club as a player, a committee member, and some of the time, the team captain of the fourth and fifth team, winning a league title during that time. In later years, he qualified as an empire, an empire the lower ladies and men's team. He became a school governor for Hatchwaran, firstly at the infant school and then at the junior school during 1995 to 2002. He joined his boys who played football from 2000 to 2010 and during that time, he helped the team management by collecting money and serving on the committee for the Hatchwaran Youth Football Club, who at that time had about 300 members. During 2007 to 2009, he was on the youth committee of Basingstoke Rugby Club, where he helped fundraising and uh, to send the under-16 team to South Africa on tour. From 1989 to 2014, he has been involved in the community center as a volunteer, a trustee for 15 plus years, as a trustee, and he has helped to form the Youth Cafe, which is now the Warren. He has always been helping and supporting the beer festival and fireworks, which has been going on for 21 years in Hatchwaran. He is currently a trustee of the Farley Wallop 
Estate Club. It is my great pleasure to give my third and last individual award to Gordon Piper. Now for my uh, award to industry. Charles Blatchford, we have got Stephen Blatchford here. This company gives clinical services and delivers specialist rehabilitation to private and government healthcare organizations, including the National Health Trust, Ministry of Defense, private companies, and insurance companies. It has well over 130 clinicians representing professions that include prosthetic, orthotic, physiotherapy, occupational therapy, nursing, rehabilitation, engineering, and specialist seating. Blatchford staff look for individual patient needs in more than 250,000 appointments each year. It gives compassionate care and let the patient decide on the choice of the design for the equipment. It also offers a patient feedback survey to shape its service in the way the patient demand. It aims to deliver its services in location which are most suitable for patients. It produces accurate specification and fabrication of product to reduce the number of journey the patient have to make. It coordinates all it works to bring health benefit to patients sooner. The company is patient-centered and understand that the process of care can be stressful and confusing. The staff are trained to develop excellent listening skills so that they understand how patients feel and respond to their needs. Value is added to give time to clinicians when patients visit the clinics by focusing on in elim eliminating processes. In January 2014, Stephen Blatchford, Chief Executive, and the team received the three major awards at the Employers Engineering Federation dinner in London. The Smart Product Award, the Growth Product Award, and the amazing <coughs> Winner of Winners Award. It was in honor and recognition of it of its talented staff. Stephen Blatchford had accompanied our Prime Minister David Cameron to promote small, medium-sized businesses in China. This family company is nearly 150 years old and is consistently recognized for innovation and its service to individuals with amputation and disability. The company holds one third of national health service contract for the provi provision of prosthetics and limb services for the servicemen and women at the MODs, Headley Court Rehabilitation Center. It also exports computer control, lower prosthetic limbs the world over. 
In July last year, I had the pleasure to see the opening of the new Blatchford Headquarters and Technology Center by Maggie Philbin, the TV personality. What I saw was impressive, and this is why I have chosen to give my award to this great and excellent company based in our borough with worldwide acclaim. Can I call on uh, Stephen to say a few words? Uh, thank you. Um, it's a great honor to receive this award. Uh, we came to Basingstoke in 1962, so we've been here for 52 years now. And we as a company employ probably 150 staff in Basingstoke and about 650 in the UK as a whole. Um, we are delighted to be in Basingstoke. It's a fantastic place to be. And I suppose the final thing I'd like to say is it's our 125th year next year. So we're going to be having a big party. Um, so thank you very much. We're absolutely delighted to receive this award. It's fantastic. Thank you, Councillor Putty. A very warm welcome to all who made it here today. A big thank you to my family and friends for coming to share in what is for me the great honour of being elected by my fellow councillors to the office of Mayor. And a warm welcome to all members, officers, local dignitaries, members of Parliament, current and future, past mayors, members of the press, who know that without us, they would have so much empty space in their papers. <laughs> Unfortunately, my sister Heather could not be with us tonight, but is watching on the web. So bear with me while I thank Heather and her husband Ray for watching us in Cyprus. Heather, Ray, please enjoy the evening. A special welcome to our returning councillors, who have retained the support of their electors. Our electors can be a forgiving lot. <laughs> and a welcome to the new councillors who can be forgiven for not knowing better. <laughs> I thank my proposer and my seconder for their kind words. There is a still tiny voice in my ear which reminds me that I'm still mortal. My thanks also to the electors of Pamber and Silchester and the former ward of Kaliba who must be fed up by now seeing my name on the ballot paper so many times since 1992. And a special thanks to the 91 who gave me my first majority all those years ago. <laughs> I thought long and hard in choosing a theme for my mayoral year, but the final decision was easy. After a year as deputy, I visited so many organisations which only exist thanks to the volunteers who run them and work for them. My theme is volunteering. My aim is not just to recognise and thank all those who give up their time to help others, but to lend my voice to encourage others to join that army of volunteers. Nationally, one in three people are engaged in voluntary work of some form or another, which sounds good until you think that means that two out of three don't. 
Volunteering is rewarding. It can be fun. It's a great way to meet new people, make new friends, and get a sense of achievement when a plan comes together. But this is not necessarily asking for a major commitment. Forget the big society. Think the small society. There are so many little things that can be done to improve and benefit our communities. And we usually know what they are. We usually spend enough time grumbling about them. In choosing a chaplain this year, I've looked to the borough as a whole and was delighted when the Reverend Karen Wellman agreed to take on the role and will proceed council meetings with prayers. Our borough has so much to be proud of, with a rich history and heritage. And my thanks go to the Basingstoke Heritage Society, which celebrate their centenary this year. The town has a history of successful companies, and we've heard of yet another one. And successful business leaders, which continues to this day, and this council is committed to carrying on this tradition for years to come. The town is rich in culture, with the anvil being a major attraction in the town. On first becoming a councillor, I had to vote on the decision to build a concert hall in the town. I made the right decision. We also have the Haymarket, a more intimate venue, where over the years we've had an active producing theatre. A lively venue at one time, with its coffee shop and restaurants, after show bar, where the audience could meet the cast and discuss the productions. With the top of town development, it could return to its former glory, and I hope it does. And I'm not going to forget Proteus, Bats, Baos, and all the other amateur groups who do a splendid job. Tomorrow, I have my first engagement as mayor, and I'll be launching the Basingstoke Festival. This is the chance for Basingstoke to have fun. I would encourage residents and visitors to look beyond the things that they would normally go to, look at something different. As a subscriber to the Haymarket season in the past, the great night outs were usually the shows I would not otherwise have chosen. I rarely found a dud. As I've said already, the voluntary organisations make our borough services and offer up so much more than all the various levels of government can afford or envisage. So it's no surprise that my choice of charities should favour the voluntary, Basing Stokes, a voluntary sector. I've chosen three. Firstly, Basing Stoke Young Carers. It's actually run by the borough with the help of volunteers. Basing Stoke Young Carers have supported the children in our community who willingly take on adult responsibility for family members no longer able to care for themselves. These children find support with young carers. Their lottery funding has been reduced this year and projects have had to be cut back. The money raised from the Mayor's Charity will enable some of these activities to continue and I will commend it to you. Secondly, Basingstoke Dialeride, which desperately needs funds to maintain their existing fleet of vehicles and to enable them to expand the service offered to fill the gap left by other service reductions. Lacking the ability to be able to travel is almost an infringement of a basic human right. Cuts in base bus services can leave communities isolated and the use of the town's cultural and recreational facilities can be restricted if there is no reliable means of getting to and returning from the venues. Dollar Ride helps fill this gap, but demand exceeds supply and I know everything we can do to help will be wisely used. Thirdly, and this may at first appear a bricks and mortar appeal. The Basingstoke Charities manage and run the almshouses in London Road. Their roof is in need of major repair, and repairs can be costly. The almshouses are now over 400 years old and part of the borough's heritage, but more importantly, they house eight vulnerable residents who could literally be left without a roof over their heads. So for the sake of the current and future residents, as well of a valuable piece of our heritage, they are worthy of our support. In addition, I intend to keep back a small amount of money, which will be available during the year. This will be used for those voluntary organisations with an urgent need, where small amounts of money can have a quick financial fix and have a significant impact immediately. To reiterate my theme for the year, Basing Serpentine is a great place to live, work, play and bring up families. The population is increasing and a local borough plan takes account of the rising population. 
People still want to come to Basingstoke, as I did back in 1977, which still makes me a newcomer in Pamba. And in comes our welcome in our community. But to support our community, we need that voluntary sector. If every councillor here was to disappear overnight, life would go on. Some people wouldn't even notice. If all the volunteers decided to down tools for a day, it would be the end of civilization as we know it. So let's support our volunteers. My charities are represented here tonight, so take time, hunt them out and talk to them. But there are many others, and Basingstoke Voluntary Services do a great job coordinating the voluntary sector. And they can provide advice to anybody on which organisations may suit you. And they will have, or will shortly have, a refreshed, user-friendly website. So have a look at it. Raising sake is a great place to be, and it gives a lot. Don't be afraid to give something back. I am looking forward to my year as mayor. I now have some announcements to make. Uh, my civic service will be at St Michael's Church on June the 15th at 6.30. Uh, the mayoress will be holding afternoon tea at the council offices on July the 15th at 3 o'clock in aid of the mayor's charity. I encourage you all to attend, either or both if you can. Between June the 27th and June the 28th, the mayoress and I will be in Erskirchen, where our youngsters will be defending the Festival of Sport Trophy. We won it last year against our twin town. Now we need, we've won it away at home, we now need to win it away. My thanks go to the teams who will be going out, and I know that they're going to do Basingstoke proud. The Mayoress and I will now invite you to join us for refreshments in the anteroom, where we will welcome you along with the Chief Executive, the Deputy Mayor and her consorts, and the Mayoral Coordinator. I will not ask you to waste time queuing in line, as has happened in the past, so if you can give us a five minute start, Please follow us into the ante room, get yourself a drink, get yourself something to eat, and then come and say hello. I want you to enjoy this evening as much as I will. You've had the fire precautions explained to you for the chamber. When we go into the ante room, just check where the fire exits are. If you have any problem, don't be afraid to ask. And I'll be grateful if councillors could remain for a minute to let our guests precede them into the anteroom. Thank you.